the King James Bible, the second book of Moses called Exodus, chapter 7. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his, out of his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Egypt, and bring forth mine armies, and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt, by great judgments. And the Egyptians shall come, shall know that I am the Lord, when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt, and bring out the children of Israel from among them. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded them, so did they. And Moses was fourscore years old, and Aaron fourscore and three years old, when they spake unto Pharaoh. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Shew a miracle for you, then shalt thou say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did as so as the Lord had commanded, and Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh, and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their enchantments, for they, for they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up them up their rods, and he hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened, and he refuseth to let the people go. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning, lo, he goeth out unto the water, and thou shalt stand by the river's brink, against he come. And the rod which was turned into a serpent shalt thou take in thine hand, and thou shalt say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath sent me unto thee, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hereto thou wouldest not hear. Thus saith the Lord, In this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand upon the waters which are on the river, and they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink. And the Egyptians shall loathe drink the water of the river. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of Egypt, and upon their streams, and upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so, as the Lord commanded, and he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of the, his servants. And the waters were all, and all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. And the fish that were in the river died, and the river stank. And the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river. And there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Neither did he hearken unto them, as the Lord had said. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house, neither did he set his heart to this also. And all the Egyptians digged round about the river for water to drink, for they could not drink of the water of the river. And seven days were fulfilled, and after that the Lord had smitten the river. Chapter 8 And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, <clears throat> Thus saith the Lord, Let, thy, let my people go that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs, and the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thine house, and into thy bedchamber, and upon thy bed, and into the house of thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thine ovens, and into thy kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come up both on thee, and upon thy people, and upon all thy servants. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up out of the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched forth his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron, 
and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go, that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me, when shall I entreat for thee, for thy servants and for thy people, to destroy the frogs from thee and thy houses, that they remain in the river only? And he said, Tomorrow. And he said, Be it according to thy word, that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God. And the frogs shall depart from thee, and from thy house, and from thy servants, and from thy people, and they shall remain in the river only. And Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh. And Moses cried unto the Lord because of the frogs which were, which he had thought brought against Pharaoh. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out of the houses and out of the villages and out of the fields, and they gathered them together upon heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart and hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so, and Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod, and smote the dust of the earth. And it became lice in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And all the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there was lice upon man and upon beast. Then the magicians said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else if thou wilt not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thy houses, and into the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground whereupon they are. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. To the end thou may, mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth, and I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall the sign be. And the Lord did so, and there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh, and into his servants' houses, and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted by reason of swarm of flies. And Pharaoh called to Moses and for Aaron, and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses said, It is not meet to do so, for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, and will not, they not stone us? We will go three days' journey into the wilderness, and sacrifice to the, to the Lord our God, and he shall command us. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go, that ye may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, only ye shall not go very far away, entreat for me. And Moses said, Behold, I go out from thee, and I will entreat the Lord, for that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people to-morrow. But let the Pharaoh deal deceitfully any more in not letting my people go to sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses went down, went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord did according to the words of Moses, and he removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. There remained not one. And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also, neither would he let, hit, let the people go. Chapter 9 then the Lord spake unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if thou refuse to let them go, and wilt hold them still, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon the cattle which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, and upon the oxen, and upon the sheep, that shall be a very grievous moraine. And the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and there shall nothing die all that is in the children of Israel. And the Lord appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow. And all the cattle of Egypt died, but of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. And Pharaoh sent, Behold, there is not one of the cattle of the Israelites dead. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. And the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace, and let Moses sprinkle it toward the heaven in sight of Pharaoh, and it shall become small dust in the land of Egypt. 
and shall be a, and it and shall be a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast throughout all the land of Egypt. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses sprinkled it up toward heaven, and it became a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast. All the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boil was upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had spoken unto Moses. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. For now, for now I will stretch out my hand, that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence, and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. And in, every, in, and in very deed for this cause I raised thee up, and chew in thee, power, my, in thee my power, that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. As yet exaltest thou thyself against my people, that thou wilt not let them go. Behold, tomorrow about this time I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as no, such hath not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. Send therefore now, and gather thy cattle and all that thou hast in the field, for upon every man and upon every beast shall be found in the field, and shall not be brought home. The hail shall come down upon them, and they shall die. He that feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and cattle flee into the houses, and he regarded not the word of the Lord left his servants and the cattle in the field. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thine hand toward heaven, that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt, upon man and upon beast, and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and the fire ran along upon the ground, and the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So there was hail, a fire mingled with the hail very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. And the hail smote throughout all the land of Egypt all that was in the field, both man and beast, and the hail smote every, smote every herb of the field, and brake every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, was there no hail. And Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron, and said unto them, I have sinned this time, the Lord is righteous, and I and my people are wicked. Entreat the Lord, for it is enough, that there be no more mighty thunderings and hail, and I will let you go, and ye shall stay no longer. And Moses said unto him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands upon the <clears throat> my hands unto the Lord, and the thunder shall cease, neither shall there be any more hail, that thou mayest know how that the earth is the Lord's. But as for thee and thy servants, I know that ye will not yet fear the Lord God. And the flax and the barley was smitten, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was boil, boiled. And But the wheat and the rye were not smitten, for they were not grown up. And Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh, and spread abroad his hands unto the Lord. And the thunderings in the hill ceased, and the rain was not poured upon the earth. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunderings had ceased, he sinned yet more and hardened his heart, he and his servants. And the heart uh, and the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, neither would he let the children of Israel go, as the Lord had spoken to by Moses.